This episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the leading tool to measure barbell performance, the gym aware. There is obviously a reason that the man who wrote the book on velocity-based training, Dr. Brian Mann, calls the gym aware the Rolls Royce when it comes to velocity-based training measuring devices. And that's because it ticks a lot of boxes when it comes to being able to measure and monitor your athletes that you get to work with. Working in velocity-based training at this time, of course, this is the tool to use. You're going to be able to take the guesswork out and have target zones set for your athletes so they're ready to roll. Power and strength analysis, yep, tick that box as well. Power drives the fastest sprints and breaks the hardest tackles, and you'll be able to make sure you're in the right zones with each lift when using the gym aware. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au today to learn what Evan and the team have in store for you with the gym aware. Being a practitioner in the world of sport performance is a challenging situation. We're in a spot where you're always asked to search for more. But more what? What are the questions that most practitioners in the world of high performance are asking? Well, where can I find cutting edge information? Where can I find different opinions and different ways of doing things and different feedback that I can get on the training that we're utilizing? And where's a place where I could find like-minded individuals to give me solid advice when it comes to my career development? This is precisely why we built the Strength Coach Network. Within the Strength Coach Network, you're going to get exclusive content monthly from some of the top practitioners in the world, bringing you the most cutting-edge information. You tie that in with a forum where you're able to connect with coaches around the world to bounce ideas off of, to learn from, and to get career advice from, and you've got your sensational one-stop shop for all things career development for strength and conditioning coaches. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash C-V-A-S-P-S, and get your first month at half price. I really look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the Gym Aware. In this show, we're going to try to dive a little deeper into the minds of some of the top practitioners, practitioners in the world to learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got where they are today. Today, we are joined by DC Sports Training's Jeff Moyer. Jeff, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, man. Honored to be here. Yeah, man. The the leadoff hitter of all time, dude. Uh, the CVASP shows Ricky Henderson. So, I'll take that. Yeah, I, I'll take that. He played for the Yankees. Yeah, and the Yankees just freaking had a great weekend, so we'll take all of that. But before we get rolling, buddy, who is Jeff Moyer? Oh, man. Um, I'm a business owner. Uh, I'm a coach. I'm an educator, uh, a husband, and a, and a father. Um, I'm uh, just a guy trying to uh, trying to find answers, man. That's all. Well, and then uh, finding a way to get into those answers a little bit. Let's let's talk about a situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. Yeah, man. Um, I uh, there's, there's a couple I've talked about them before. Um, uh, one, the first, the first real one that kind of like blew my mind was, uh, getting to go out and, and, and work with Dr. Yass's firsthand. A lot of, a lot of coaches probably familiar with his work, familiar with his, his books have read all the stuff he's translated early on in their careers. Cause that's what we do. Um, trying to get into this industry is read the Russian stuff. Um, but not a lot of coaches, uh, are really really prevy to, to what he actually does. And doc is a PhD in biomechanics. Um, but he was also a, uh, a college professor and he's also been a sport coach, uh, at the, the youth levels before. And, um, I worked with a quarterback. I'll keep, try to keep the story short, short, worked with a quarterback that broke his elbow, throwing a football, not getting hit, not hitting anybody, not hitting the ground, just, just broke throwing. And I knew it was something mechanical. I couldn't point, pinpoint what it was. Got the opportunity to go out um, and see Dr. Yeses and have him take a look at this quarterback. Uh, flew out with the uh, the quarterback and the offensive coach, offensive coordinator, um, who saw film of this quarterback throwing previously uh, before he broke the elbow. Um, as soon as we sat down in his living room, uh, Doc said, X, Y, Z is wrong with your throwing motion. And, and that's what led to um, led to the problem. And I was just like, Whoa, holy shit. Um, how, how do you, how do you figure that out? Um, that, that's pretty cool. I like that ability, man. I, I want that ability to, 
be able to see with my eyes and say that's going to lead to injury or that caused injury or whatever, man. I want that ability. Um, and then again, not a lot of people know. Yes, he has a PhD in biomechanics, but not a lot of people know that he's very knowledgeable in in motor learning um, because having that knowledge in biomechanics is great. But if you can't apply it, then who gives a shit? So literally, we got up and we went right out to a, a field, an empty field that was right down the bottom of the hill uh, out in San Diego, and we just started going at it and uh, working on the mechanics. Doc started teaching him how to correct the problems and how to. We broke down the throwing and, and rebuilt it, and uh, um, that was really cool to see. Uh, that was that was that that kind of really. Um, I don't know. That opened my eyes, man. I was like, okay, I, I want this ability. I want to be able to see that and be able to do that. Um, so that was really cool. And the other story I told uh, when I got to present at CVAS um, last year, uh, had a had a, uh, a tennis player that had a problem with his backhand. Backhand kept breaking down, kept pulling the ball, was an issue. We doctor yeses the shit out of it, broke it down, biomechanics, motor learning, specialized exercises, built it up beautifully. Um, got to work with his tennis uh, coach, so we got to actually build it up very nicely. And uh, even though it was way better, it still kept breaking down in certain certain cir- circumstances. I can't speak. Um, and then one day, Ryan Harrison of Slow the Game Down, uh, son of the lo- uh, late Dr. Bill Harrison, rest in peace, um, came out, was kind enough to come out to uh, my facility one day in between flights uh, when he was working in professional baseball. And... Uh, I had a couple athletes in the gym. He called that athlete over, didn't know him, didn't know what sport he played, nothing like that. Uh, started talking to him, literally 60-second conversation, did a 30-second evaluation of him with his eyes. I was walking over after I, I snapped a picture and posted on Instagram. I walked right over to find out what the hell they're doing. And he goes, uh, I bet he struggles with off-speed shots with his backhand because he's always pulling the ball in front. I said, yeah, how, how the hell did you figure that out? And then we went through some of the visual stuff, and it was his pe- perception. Uh, his right eye perceived the ball closer and higher than uh, his left eye in, in a closed stance forehand. That is the eye closest to the ball. So he perceived that ball to be closer than what it was and higher than it was. So on an off-speed shot, he'd have a tendency to be out in front a lot. And I was just like, well, holy shit. I spent all this time learning movement and biomechanics and, and, and motor learning. Uh, it really never dawned on me too much, that uh, perception could lead to a lot of that stuff. I mean, I've, I've read about it, but uh, never saw it firsthand. And that was my first instance of seeing it firsthand. Um, so I want that ability. If I'm going to work on movement, well, damn it, I want to understand perception and what goes into movement. Uh, because an athlete's movement is driven by what they perceive in front of them. So uh, I want that ability. So I started going down that rabbit hole and haven't looked back since. So there you go. There's two, two for one. Yeah, man. And that's awesome because we're talking motor learning and the biomechanical aspect of analyzing movement with Doc and then the perceptual skills and the vision skills from the Harrisons. Yes, sir. That's, that's pretty freaking rad. So now yeah, man. let's, let's change gears a little bit here. You're an inquisitive dude, extremely inquisitive. Um, but if you could ask one question and you know, like you would get the answer, what, what would that question be and why? Man, um, one outside of the industry uh, would just be why? Why are we here? Why does all this matter? Why should we care? Um, and the one in our industry, um, I guess we try to figure out, you know, uh, um, movement. Like, where is movement coming from? Is is it uh, driven by the nervous system? Driven by the brain? Uh, driving, driven deep within us? Uh, reflexes? Stuff like that. I'd like to learn more uh, about movement. Um, I think I, I quoted in um, my article for you, or I know it was in one of my articles that I, that I wrote on on motor control. Um, a quote from uh, a story told to uh, Professor Laddish by Nikolai Bernstein um, about uh, God's cousin. Um, I can't remember the full story. You have to, if you guys are interested, find that article on on CVS.com. But uh, uh, something along the lines of God has a cousin. And God, um, it's, his cousin wanted to learn as much as information as he could. So he would ask God for information. God would lay it out. And uh, um, if the story holds right, God wanted to learn about movement, or God's cousin wanted to learn about movement. So uh, God gave him 
some blueprints and everything like that about movement. And if the story still holds up true, that God's cousin's still sitting, looking at those blueprints, trying to figure shit out. Um, so I, I've kind of always privy to that uh, that little story. I like that. No, I love that because I think at the end of the day, that's kind of the holy grail of sport training anyway. Yes. So then let's switch gears here for the third and final question, Jeff. Like, you're in the trenches all the time. You're coaching all the time. You're studying all the time. You're contributing for us all the time. But what's your escape so that you can keep yourself rolling? Um, I really don't have too many, to be totally honest with you. Uh, my family, one, hanging out with uh, the wife and the kids. Get to, uh, I have two twin one-year-olds and, and uh, soon to be five-year-old. So they keep me, uh, they keep me quite busy, keep me on my toes. Um, I love drinking craft beer, as you all know. Uh, so I'm always up to going to a local brewery and stuff like that. Um, but to be honest with you, I, my I just like to read. Um, uh, I, I just like to read about stuff in our industry. I'm not a big, uh, not, I'm not a big fiction guy. I only read nonfiction, and I, I like reading things related to our field. Um, so I got probably 10, 12 books. On Kindle right now that I'm partly reading and jumping around, I got uh, at least four or five books on Audible right now that I'm listening to and jumping around and uh, a whole bunch of podcasts and articles saved on my uh, my reading list on, on my iPad. So uh, I, I just like to read. I love it, brother. Man, it's constantly growing and constantly getting better. And Jeff, thank you so much for being the inaugural guest of Outside the Rack, brother. Thanks, Jay. I appreciate it. Go Bills. Yeah, man. Go Bills. We'll catch up soon, homie. Appreciate you. Thanks, bye.